Good morning YouTube, Tula here. It's a beautiful autumn morning, Saturday. I'm here with my coffee and I would like to talk you through the process of drawing these oranges that I did in the last couple of nights. These are the materials I used, the list in the, is in the description. I used um, um, Alana 100% cotton paper. It's a cold pressed, it's textured and delightful to work with. I used five colors, the tubes that you see. Three by Sennelier, the ultramarine, French ultramarine, Indian yellow and carmine. And two by uh, Royal Talents Van Gogh line, the lemon yellow and the cerulean blue, which I am... <laughs> my god I am in awe of <laughs> it's incredible I used um, a polychromos faber Castle polychromos pencil for the outlines and for drawing and two brushes for the painting one is um, a color hit on number four and the other is Prado Escoda number two Escoda Prado number two, sorry. The brush with the red handle is one I only use for mixing colors. I don't paint with it. So let's move on. Let's see. I also have um, notes that I prepared ahead. So, because I have a lot to say and I didn't want to forget anything. So you'll hear me flipping pages once in a while. I wrote a lot. I hope I can read it. So this uh, drawing So I'm not uh, good at drawing from reference and I don't particularly like it. I prefer to look and absorb what I can and then draw from my mind. So I'm not looking at anything here. I'm working from my imagination. I've been planning to draw oranges for several months now, although now is the right season for it. And I was looking at a lot of images and observing the flowers and the leaves etc. So I feel that I know my subject well enough to do it from my head now. And I'm going straight in. There is no no marking on the paper other than what you see. I started straight with the polychromos colored pencil. I can erase bits of it when it's uh, light, but not, not a whole lot, but it's okay. So I'm trying to envision how the oranges are, are attached to the branch, how the branch goes, where the leaves turn, where the blossom is. Initially I wanted to to use ink for the outlines and a dip pen and I tried different inks and different nibs but I didn't really like any of them and when I tried um, outlining with the polychromos I really liked the result. I also tested several shades. I tried um, a more a dark bluish purple. I tried a grayish one, gray purple. Um, another one that was more brownish and this one I liked best. This is the red violet shade and I love this pencil. This is my second one. I, I had to get another one after finishing the first. <coughs> Sorry. And I personally find that purple lends itself very well to all colors. 
So I enjoy it. I am um, I'm a graphic designer and I like the the graphic look. I like having outlines on things. And this uh, painting is not meant to look realistic. It is a graphic representation. So after sketching the my my drawing I went over the the outlines with thicker strokes of the pencil again as I said I wanted it to be a graphic representation now we're getting on to the watercolors it's been four years since I started working with watercolors <laughs> and I picked up a few habits <laughs> no, I'm not sure all of them are good ones but some I think are, are good you can see that I'm working with two water gels one for dirty water and one for clean as I told you before I have um, I have a, a designated a brush, an old one, and I use it only for mixing my colors and so I don't ruin my good brushes. Oh, look at this incredible. This is the Indian yellow with a bit of um, a bit of the carmine. I'm leaving a few white areas for highlights now um, I think in uh, watercolors a lot is determined by the consistency of the paint the ratio of um, paint to water and when you have um, some when you have a paint that is uh, more dense, that has more paint pigments in it and one that is more diluted, they usually don't interact very well. But I, uh, this, may, this one may be a bad habit of mine, but I really like um, mixing the paint on the paper. And so I don't have the same consistency of paint on my palette. Some are just almost pure paint and some are very diluted with water and I do get uh, blossoms because of this and this is a great advantage of the, um, of the cotton paper because the differences are not not noticeable here. This uh, paper is very accepting. <laughs> it's really nice. <laughs> it stays wet longer and it's not as uh, finicky when it comes to the um, different consistencies of paint and I find that very liberating. I know my method of not mixing the paint probably isn't recommended but I really like working like this and I'm not going to stop so it's nice to find a paper that is willing to join me in, in this. Uh, what did I want to say? Oh yeah, you can see on the side that I have a paper towel folded there 
and I started moistening it so I spray it with a little bit of water once in a while and it's hard to explain, so many things are hard to explain I find that I, I used to use it dry and um, dab my brush either before I pick color to get rid of more of water residue or after just like here after I pick some color and I feel that I have too much on the brush and having the wet paper towel I think is really useful because it doesn't soak all the um, wetness out of my brush it leaves just takes out a bit and leaves it um, moist enough and that's really nice it's really hard for me to explain but I do recommend that you try it and see if it helps you in your process now before I, I want to talk about the lana paper before I did this I made a few tests as I told you I tried different inks and um, nibs and I tried out my three cotton papers I have three of them I have a Fabriano Artistico cold breast this uh, cold breast lana paper lana it's French and I also have a smooth hot pressed uh, canson moulin de roi and the Fabriano Artistico was really disappointing. I was so surprised. The orange shades were so muted and faded and had none of the vibrancy that you see here. The smooth paper, I like smooth paper. The Moulin de Roi was nice, but surprisingly the texture of this lana paper was incredible you can see it I think in the leaf on the top right the um, vibrancy of the color was incredible and also the texture lended itself really well to the to the to the watercolors <laughs> I think they did a really good job making this paper um, I was so surprised by how beautiful it took everything and even when I tried to to use the the dip pens on it it was despite the paper having ridges and being textured it worked very well so lovely paper the Lana cold pressed watercolor paper So you can see that sometimes I um, I use water before I put the paint on and sometimes I go straight in with the paint. Mm. Why is that? I'm not sure. Depends on the size of the area. It depends on how I want the colors to mix depends on the con mostly I think on the consistency of the paint I want to use if my paint is very diluted I may use it straight on the paper if it's more uh, dense <laughs> with the pigment then I might um, I might um, Sorry, lost my train of thought. This brush that I'm using, it's, um, I'm not sure what the company is. It says Color Heat with OU on it and also Oron Plus and it's made in England. 
it's really soft I've had it for over 20 years I love this brush it's held so well through the years <laughs> and I was trying once to look at it to look for it online and I couldn't find it I have no idea what happened to the company if they changed the name if they stopped making brushes but if you have any information about it and know where I can get more of these brushes please let me know I would love to get more so initially I I thought I will color the whole background but then looking at it again I decided to make a frame to have some of the leaves go out of the inner frame and to only color the inner frame so I'm creating my frame here really useful <laughs> to use the width of the ruler as a guide Okay, so now we are getting to the background, the ultramarine. Um, I told you I usually keep um, in this in this case I did want uh, an even even um, pool of color <laughs> because I wanted the background to look even without any not not to have it look patchy or with the uh, strokes of my layers and here I'm just trying to get um, the paint dense enough to my liking now it's too watery still and um, coloring the background is something I do want to talk about um, hold on okay so the background is uh, something I wanted to to stress in this video and I really hope I will be able to explain well what I what I mean when I started using watercolors one of my major issues was how to create an even evenly colored background I saw a lot of uh, tutorials and explanations showing me how to create a rectangular background or a circular one but most of my backgrounds were not just um, simple shapes they were complex shapes like I have here and I had a really hard time I'm still struggling with it of how to create um, an even background in complex shapes so there are from again this is just my experience and I'm far from being an expert on anything really in life <laughs> um, I find a few methods you can use to do it first of all if your background is broken up to smaller shapes like I have here it's very helpful so it's it might even be worth it to to draw something in the background so you can color it one shape at a time and have it um, uh, deliberately broken up into shapes another thing you can do is um, okay what happens is that um, the patchy look that you get um, one stroke overlapping another like you do when you, when you draw with markers paint with markers it happens when part of the paint has dried and then you go back and you actually put another layer on top of it and because 
watercolors are transparent you can see those overlapping areas and that gets you the patchy look so the idea is not to let the paint dry <laughs> and um, the cotton paper was very helpful with this because it does remain wet for longer in in my experience so one method you can do is um, use the lost and found edges not not have uh, sharp edges where you are going to co continue painting so you can either wet the whole area or wet just the area that um, you want the edge to be in and you're going to continue there later and one of my problems with that is that even when I wet the paper it starts drying by the by the time I finish wetting it and go back to the to putting the paint in and other times it can just dilute my paint too much so what I'm doing here is what I usually do and that is I try to move the paint around all the time before it has the chance to dry so I'm trying to be simultaneously quick detailed and I need to be very focused for this I'm um, on top of that I am using two brushes because my larger brush isn't very good with the little crevices it's not fine enough the point the point isn't fine enough so i can get the little crevices so i keep changing between the smaller brush for the little details and the larger brush to cover larger areas more quickly because time is uh, of an essence here i don't want my paint to dry this is the main area and it's a large complex shape and I plan, I think first, where I should start and where I should end and what my route should be. It's like a, a labyrinth. <laughs> you have a starting point and a finishing point. <coughs> and as I said, what I'm trying to do is both um, get all the little crevices and the details tilt these edges as finely as I can and get into the, um, the area where I'm going to continue painting the background every minute or so so the paint doesn't have time to dry One of the mistakes I did when coloring this background was that I didn't pay enough attention to where I left um, more paint. You see the dark patches here? I should have wiped, swiped those with a brush and moved them further down. Okay, and now I should go back to the, yeah, move my paint before it dries. I think of it as moving the paint. I'm adding a bit every time so that the, the paint is always wet. And <coughs> I'm not sure if I said this already, I probably did. The cotton paper is very helpful with this. It rem it maintains it holds the um, the wetness for longer. And I live in a hot climate, and this is very useful here because my paint always dries very quickly. 
Okay, so this is the tricky part because I have a lot of um, surface that I need to to cover. I want both to move this area of the paint and also I need to get to the to the part below the two oranges and color <coughs> so we color the background there and here I left a bit of uh, paint too much paint in the middle there that I should have dragged down and then my my background would have been more even oh this color is so beautiful isn't it the ultramarine is the complementary of the um, um, orangish yellow, yellow orangish of the oranges and it it works it works really well I think in it's my my taste at least. Okay, so trying to cover more area. You see how much paint I left there? I should move it around now. And also, if you do this method, your paint should be wet enough, <laughs> not dry. The brush should be should be quite wet, and that's why it's uh, useful to have um, the paint ready ahead with enough water in it. So. Every time I dab my brush into the paint in the palette, it has the same consistency of um, water paint ratio. I don't have to, if I would have dipped my brush in the water jar, I would change the consistency and you will probably see it in the, you see, you'll see the difference in the, in the painting. If this is something you're interested on in, let me know and I might make another video about it in trying to explain how you can um, work with uh, complex backgrounds. I draw a lot of mandalas and many times I have a circular background that has no beginning and end point and it's a struggle sometimes to to create the even wash to um, adding shadows to parts of the of the painting the, I mixed a brownish grayish sort of um, shade from my five colors I made um, one that tends more to the orange for the oranges sorry so I made um, one mix to shade the oranges that is a little more toward it's um orangish grayish brownish sort of color and for the leaves I made um, 
the mixture a little more green and with more yellow in it more of the lemon yellow I'm trying to envision if this was a real branch how it would look where my light is coming from what leaves are on top of others and how the shade would affect them it doesn't have to be realistic doesn't have to be exact I think um, good enough is good enough <laughs> so now I'm testing the the shade for the the color for the shading of the leaves and I think I made the paint a little too watery if I would have waited another minute or two it would have been better And <clears throat> so where the shadows are, where the leaves are closer, I make the shadow a little more, more defined. And where I think my object is further, I try to make the shadow more blurry to give them the effect of getting further from the, from the leaf. I like this this little bit. Just a hint. I think the shadows added a lot to the painting. You don't really notice them, but I think they they add a lot. So I was looking at um, what I had so far and thought it would be nice to make the um, to add a bit of shadow to the background on three sides to make it, it look more three-dimensional to make the background look like it's lower than the white frame and then I added some flat shadows not three-dimensional on the white so I used a more neutral gray again from the same colors oh look at this this is uh, one advantage of the cotton paper I think and I'm also adding some color to the flowers and the little buds this yellow is mixed from both the Indian yellow, the warm yellow, and the cool, the lemon yellow. And <laughs> you see the green circle in the middle of this flower. This is going one day to be a big orange. It's so nice how the, the fruit starts. You have just a tiny little thing growing in the middle of the flower and then it grows and grows and the flower, the petals dry and fall and this little thing is going to grow into a um, beautiful big orange Changing the direction of the page allows me to get um, more precise in the top of the brush when I need an exact line 
and also to get the gradations just by swiping the brush and I think this is it my paintings done I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you next time bye bye